Welcome to Vivid History, bring you vivid and fascinating historical stories through colorized photos. In the 19th century, an audacious huckster managed to convince countless individuals, including major businesses, that he owned the vast expanse of Arizona. Even the U.S. government briefly entertained the idea of paying him off, proving that confidence can sway even the most outlandish claims. Here are 20 intriguing tales of historic hucksters. James Addison Peralta Rivas, also known as the Baron of Arizona, was a master con man who deceived thousands of people and fraudulently claimed ownership of most of Arizona. Raised in Missouri, Rivas was influenced by his mother's love for Spanish literature, which fueled his grandiose self-image as a romantic hero. During the Civil War, he used his talent for forgery to escape the hardships of soldiering and even sold forged passes to other soldiers. Eventually, Rivas switched sides and served in a Union Army artillery regiment. After honing his forgery skills in the Confederate Army, Rivas used his talent to clear up messy paperwork and fix vague property titles in the real estate business. Partnering with prospector George Willing, they headed to Arizona to develop a large Spanish land grant. However, Willing was found dead shortly after filing a claim, and Rivas, who had become a journalist in California, came into contact with corrupt railroad magnates and the corrupt Public Lands Commission. Realizing that the Public Lands Commission would approve almost any claim as long as the right people were paid off, James Rivas saw an opportunity. He informed his wealthy friends about his deceased partner's land, without revealing his own involvement, and offered to negotiate right-of-way privileges for their railroad project. After purchasing his late partner's interest in the land from his widow, Rivas used his newspaper connections to generate hype and exaggerate the legitimacy of his claim. To strengthen Miguel Peralta's land claim, Rivas fabricated a family history for him by inserting forged documents into the Mexican archives. These documents established a fictitious lineage of an 18th century Baron Peralta de los Colorados, who was granted a massive land grant in Arizona. Rivas also created a family tree of the descendants of the Baron, including Miguel Peralta, who eventually sold the claim to Rivas. James Rivas painstakingly researched and studied old documents in museums and archives, experimenting with inks, chemicals, and papers to create flawless forgeries. He even went as far as buying old portraits and fabricating a connection between himself and the fictional Peralta family by marrying a young orphaned girl named Sophia, whom he convinced was a descendant of the noble Peraltas. With his skills as a master forger, Rivas altered church records and inserted documents, ultimately becoming the self-proclaimed Baron of Arizona through his marriage to Sophia, now the Baroness of Arizona. In 1883, James Rivas executed his plan to steal the land of central Arizona, leaving the inhabitants shocked and fearful the news of the Silver King mine owners paying Rivas a hefty sum of $25,000 to avoid litigation only heightened the sense of impending danger, making the threat of losing their land all too real for the people. James Rivas, known as the Baron of Arizona, cleverly exploited his barony by extorting rent and fees from the occupants, including large landowners and even the U.S. government, who preferred paying him rather than risking legal battles. Riavis amassed a staggering $5.3 million in cash and promissory notes, enabling him and his wife to live a lavish lifestyle with multiple homes across the U.S. and Europe, and rubbing shoulders with the Spanish aristocracy who found amusement in his audacity. 
After years of living the high life, the Baron of Arizona's fraudulent scheme came crashing down. Despite his meticulous forgeries, his documents contained glaring errors that ultimately led to his downfall. He tried to fight back with a lawsuit but lost, resulting in a 42-count indictment and a two-year prison sentence. Following his release, he fell into poverty and died in 1914, buried in a pauper's grave. In 1981, self-taught archaeologist Shinichi Fujimura caused a stir in Japan with his announcement of Stone Age artifacts dating back 40,000 years. This find not only established a long human presence in Japan, but also catapulted Fujimura to national and international fame, making him a prominent figure in Japanese archaeology. His discoveries were even included in school textbooks, ensuring their impact would be felt for years to come. Fujimura's incredible luck in finding ancient artifacts continued throughout his career, pushing Japan's human prehistory further back. However, his skills proved to be too good to be true when he was caught planting evidence at a dig site, confessing tearfully that the devil made me do it. A group of medieval monks whose identities remain unknown pulled off one of the greatest hoaxes in history. They forged a document called the Donation of Constantine, which claimed that Roman Emperor Constantine the Great had gifted authority over Rome and the Western Roman Empire to Pope Sylvester I. This forgery, made centuries after the deaths of Constantine and Sylvester, had little impact at the time but would later play a significant role in shaping the course of Christendom and the Western world. The Donation of Constantine, a forged document, was used by Pope Leo IX in the 11th century to assert his authority over secular rulers. It was widely accepted as authentic until the Renaissance, when scholars challenged its legitimacy due to language inconsistencies and dating errors. The popes eventually stopped referring to the donation in their pronouncements. Keeley, a hustler with a knack for various jobs, presented himself as an inventor con man when he proclaimed to have created an engine that harnessed the boundless power of a non-existent substance known as the luminiferous ether. He further claimed that he could extract energy from water by tapping into the power of atoms. John Keeley, the self-proclaimed inventor, claimed that by harnessing the vibrations of water's atoms in his engine, one could tap into limitless energy. He demonstrated this by pouring water into the engine and playing musical instruments to activate it, resulting in impressive displays of power such as ripping apart ropes and driving bullets through wooden planks. Keeley used fancy-sounding terminology like quadruple negative harmonics, and hydro-pneumatic pulsating vacuum engine to convince gullible investors of his revolutionary invention. John Keeley used pseudo-scientific gibberish to deceive investors into giving him millions of dollars to fund his Keeley Motor Company. Despite physicists labeling him a fraud and perpetual motion as impossible, gullible investors continued to pour money into his venture until his death in 1898, when it was revealed that his engine was powered by compressed air and cleverly concealed pipes and hoses. In the summer of 1835, America buzzed with excitement as the Sun newspaper announced the astonishing discovery of life and civilization on the moon. Sir John Herschel, a renowned astronomer, had used groundbreaking telescopes to reveal a whole new world, teeming with oceans, rivers, trees, and even human-like creatures. The discovery of strange creatures on the moon, including man-bats with wings, caused a frenzy of excitement. However, it turned out to be a satirical story that was mistaken for truth, 
leading to the authors ending the tale with the accidental destruction of the telescope and observatory. Sir John Herschel had never made these astronomical discoveries or observed the moon in such a way. In 1917, two young girls in the English village of Cottingley claimed to have encountered fairies. Despite skepticism from their parents, they managed to produce photographs of the fairies, leading to a captivating hoax that even fooled the author of Sherlock Holmes, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Two years after Elsie Wright and Frances Griffith took photographs of fairies, the images gained popularity when they were shown at a meeting of the Theosophical Society. Despite experts deeming the photos as crude cardboard cutouts, influential members of the society, including Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, embraced the photos and championed their authenticity. In 1920, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle boldly asserted that fairies were real, despite facing ridicule from the press. Unfortunately, his belief in the existence of fairies was proven wrong in 1983 when cousins Elsie Wright and Frances Griffiths confessed that their photographs were a hoax. In 